Welcome to Deploying and Upgrading IRIS with the InterSystems Kubernetes Operator. My name is Steven Lubars, and I'm a developer in the Data Platforms Group at InterSystems. My current focus is on deployment, scaling, and management of IRIS in the cloud, including containers, the InterSystems Cloud Manager, and the subject of this talk, the InterSystems Kubernetes Operator. This talk assumes some familiarity with Kubernetes and concepts such as stateful set, but for those who may not have seen the InterSystems Kubernetes Operator or know much about Kubernetes operators in general, I'll be giving a brief overview. We'll look at some common IRIS cluster topologies one can achieve using the InterSystems Kubernetes Operator, and then talk about what happens during an upgrade. Finally, we'll demonstrate upgrade of an actual IRIS cluster using the InterSystems Kubernetes Operator. A Kubernetes Operator is how one extends Kubernetes, allowing one to create a new, first-class type customized for your application. It can enforce rules about scaling and placement of nodes. It can manage resources, such as disk volumes and credentials, and make calls directly into your application's API. The InterSystems Kubernetes Operator is a Kubernetes operator we've written to deploy and manage IRIS. It provides an intuitive way to describe an IRIS architecture, such as the number and kind of IRIS instances, and how they're arranged. Some of its domain-specific knowledge includes knowing the health of IRIS instances and which mirror members the current primary. Some of the resources it manages include persistent storage, also known as durable sys, IRIS configuration files, such as iris.cpf, and secrets, such as the IRIS license and IRIS sign-on credentials. It also allows scale-in and scale-out while preventing accidental deletion of data, and, as we're going to see in the demo, can orchestrate upgrades. Let's dive a little deeper into some of the architecture choices one has when deploying an IRIS cluster. One can specify the number of IRIS instances, whether to employ mirroring, sharding, or a combination of the two, the amount and kind of storage, which includes size and IOPS, whether to allocate an arbiter node, and how to distribute IRIS instances across availability zones. There are a lot of other parameters which can be configured, but these are easily observed and play into the upgrade process. This cluster consists of five IRIS instances, one data node and four compute nodes. The data node is managed by one stateful set, and the compute nodes are managed by another. The IRIS application itself runs within the pods with one instance per pod. The data pod has a persistent volume associated with it. This volume survives restart or replacement of the data pod and will always reattach to the same pod. Compute nodes, also known as ECP clients or application servers, are completely optional. I included them just to make the slide less boring. Note that this diagram is oversimplified. There are actually four persistent volumes associated with the IRIS instance data, widge, journal, and alternate journal. The compute nodes also have persistent volumes of their own, for example, to remember which data node they're bound to. And between the pod and persistent volume is a persistent volume claim. This cluster consists of two data nodes comprising a failover pair, four compute nodes, and an arbiter. Note that with mirroring enabled, the stateful set has its own numbering scheme, allowing us to have multiple failover pairs without names colliding. I'll use this topology to illustrate a couple of upgrade scenarios, and this is the type of cluster we'll use for the demo. Kubernetes provides a number of update strategies. The most widely used is called rolling update. In this strategy, pods within a stateful set are updated in reverse order. So in this failover pair, we see that pod data 01 is updated first, followed by data 00. I wanted to talk for a moment about how upgrade affects the mirror set. In this example, we're assuming that pod 0 starts out as the primary and pod 1 as the backup. Note that regardless of how they start out, when pod 1 is being cycled, pod 0 becomes the primary if it wasn't already. And when pod 0 is cycled, pod 1 becomes the primary. So immediately after upgrade, we will always find that pod 0 is the backup and pod 1 is the primary, at least until the next failover event. The same logic is followed if we update the compute nodes. They're updated in reverse order, in this case, starting with pod compute 3 and ending with pod compute 0. In this topology, we have two shards, two mirrored shards, that is. Notice that each failover pair gets its own stateful set. Giving each failover pair its own stateful set has several advantages. One is that it gives each failover pair consistent numbering with respect to having a pod 0, pod 1, etc. Another is that it simplifies node and zone anti-affinity allowing us, for example, to divide our primary and backup members between two availability zones. 
The advantage relevant to this discussion is that it allows us to upgrade our failover pairs one at a time. In the case of mirroring plus sharding, we're going to visit each stateful set. And within each one, we update the pods, just as in the non-sharding case. So first is stateful set data 0. And within that, pods data 0, 1 and data 0, 0. Then we upgrade stateful set data 1. And within that, pods data 1, 1 and data 1, 0. Before starting the demo, I wanted to show the topology we'll be upgrading. It comprises one failover pair, four compute nodes, and an arbiter. The data nodes are going to start out running iris 2020.3, and we'll be upgrading them to iris 2020.4. So I'll be doing today's demo on GKE. I've already created a cluster consisting of nine nodes spanning three availability zones. I've also installed the iris Kubernetes operator, and I've used it to deploy an iris cluster which we'll be upgrading. Um, top half of the screen here is the YAML definition of the cluster. Um, we have the kind iris cluster, which is a custom resource definition defined by the operator to extend Kubernetes. A few other fields of interest, the cryptographic hash of the desired iris password, the iris license as a Kubernetes secret, a config map, uh, containing overrides to the iris CPF file. Here in the topology section, uh, under data, we have mirrored set to true. That means we're going to get two pods in our stateful set. Um, the operator's anti-affinity rules guarantee that those pods will land on different nodes. Optionally, we have zonal anti-affinity, which will further guarantee that both sides of the mirror will be in different availability zones. Uh, we've defined under compute two replicas for two compute servers, and we have an arbiter. In the bottom half of the screen here, in the pod view, you can see all these components up and running. This is the operator itself, the arbiter, the two compute nodes, and the two um, data pods. So what we want to do is upgrade from 2020.3 to 2020.4. So the first question is, how do we know we're really running 2020.3? Well, one way is we can look at the management portal. This definition includes a load balancer, which gives us an external IP address. And we can use this to look in the management portal here, where on the about page, we can see that we are running 2020.3. We can also ascertain the version from the command line by opening up a shell directly on one of the uh, IRIS instances. The IRIS list command shows us we're in 2020.3. We can actually open an iris session there, write out the version, and see that it's 2020.3. Um, while I'm in here, I'm going to set a global. Welcome to the full December 2020. And I'm doing this to show um, perhaps the most important feature of the stateful set, which is that our persistent data in the form of a persistent volume claim will survive the cycling of the container itself, which is about to happen when we upgrade to 2020.4. So we'll come back after the upgrade to see that that global is still intact. So to do the upgrade, we simply replace the definition of the image here. I'll comment this one out. Add this one, the 2020.4 image that we have staged. And I will reapply the definition. And we can watch the upgrade happen in real time. 
first thing that happens is that the second pod of this stateful set is terminating. It's now being recreated. Part of the time here is actually in having this container be pulled down from a Docker registry. Now that's running. Um, as soon as the readiness probe returns uh, true, and this becomes uh, one out of one ready, we will see the first pod in this stateful set terminate and recreate. Now, as it happens, the first pod was the primary in the mirror set, and the second pod was the backup. After the backup gets recreated, it will still be the backup. But when the primary is recreated, um, it will come back as the backup, and the second pod will become the primary. So they'll, they're going to switch. They're going to switch roles. This process takes about a minute. Okay, so this pod entered running, and we see uh, the first pod is now terminating and will be recreated. Okay, now it's running. And of course, there's two levels of running here. The pod itself is running. The container within the pod is running. But Iris itself has health checks that define whether or not it's running. Um, and that's what we're waiting, waiting for here. And in, in addition to um, uh, reconnecting to its persistent volume, of course, the mirror is also uh, reestablishing itself. So the upgrade appears to be complete. We can go refresh here in the management portal. And we do see that the version is now 2020.4. We can run our session again and write out that global we set earlier. And we see that the data is intact, that, that the persistent volume was reattached to the new container. So that's how we upgrade Iris using the InterSystems Kubernetes operator. So today we've seen how the Iris Kubernetes operator extends Kubernetes to create a new type representing an Iris cluster. We've seen how to describe an Iris cluster using YAML. We've reviewed several common Iris topologies. We discussed the upgrade process, including its relationship to sharding and mirroring. And finally, we performed an upgrade of an Iris cluster. A couple of other sessions you might enjoy. One is on our new high security Iris container. Another is about a customer experience using Kubernetes to deploy an Iris cluster. If you want to connect with me, my name again is Stephen Lubars. I can be reached at stephen.lubars at intersystems.com. And thank you for attending this talk today.